I've never really been a big dress watch guy. You guys can't really tell at home, but normally I'm wearing shorts and sandals while filming this stuff. So I just don't dress up to the point that I feel like I need a ton of options, and I'm pretty happy with the ones I have. Plus, a lot of the reviews I watch of some of the great dress watches out there, I kind of find a tad boring. So I've never really focused on any of them. However, back when I started this channel, there was one dress watch I did obsess over, as I watched every review I could find on it. And that was the Seiko Cocktail Time, and specifically the blue version. I was just amazed by the dial and desperately wanted to get one on my wrist, just to see the kaleidoscope of color in person. Yet I never got one. Whenever I was looking for a new watch, there was always something else that won out in the end. That is, until earlier this year, where I just happened to find this one on sale and I couldn't resist buying it. I decided it was finally time to see if it was as great in person as everyone says it is. And after spending some time with it, I can say that without a doubt, it really is. The dial is simply amazing to look at, and these macro shots should speak for themselves. Let's first start off with what a lot of people consider to be the biggest negatives when it comes to the cocktail time watches. And that's size, but after that, it's pretty much all uphill from here. So width is about 40 and a half millimeters wide without, and 44 millimeters wide with the crown. Well, lug to lug is 47 and a half, and total thickness is about 12.2. The main component here that people seem to have the most problem with is width. So let's briefly talk about that. Now, traditional dress watches are gonna be smaller, around 34 to 39 millimeters. So those that are more traditionalists are gonna see this as being too big to be a dress watch. Yet a lot of people, myself included here, would say that this and other watches like it, like say the Orient Bambino, could be considered a contemporary or modern sized dress watch. And that in a nutshell for some people is an endless source of conflict and one that's not gonna get wrapped up anytime soon. For me personally, I think there's room for both. It really just depends on who you are, what you're wearing, and what you like. And I think if anything, you could think of these modern sized dress watches as the business casual of the watch world, as it's somewhere in between. But regardless of all that, the most important thing here is that you think the watch is rather comfortable. That and that it fits under any sleeve or cuff you have. And that last bit has just as much to do with the total thickness as the width. Now, thickness is something I've also heard complaints about as well. But most of those are aimed at the original cocktail time, the SARP 065. And if you're not familiar with that, that's a watch that was so popular it gained a cult following. And Seiko were then responded by creating an entire line of cocktail time watches. And that original one was a bit thicker at 13 millimeters where this one is sitting just over 12. Although a lot of that height has to do with this really nice domed Hardlux crystal, as the case itself has a rather slim profile to it. Now, it's not too hard to find some other dress watches that are going to be thinner. And traditionally, watches are thinner, especially if you're looking at some mechanical watches and not automatics. But I think 12 millimeters is very manageable, and a bit average for an automatic watch, and especially so with a 4R movement in it. The Hardlux crystal itself would be another complaint against the cocktail time. Usually the SRPB41 runs in the mid 300s, and at that price, a scratch resistant sapphire would be really nice here. And while some other companies may be willing to give that to you for this price, Seiko still isn't there yet. But for those that care, Long Island does have a box sapphire upgrade for these. Now, rounding out the specs, we have a 20 millimeter lug width, a mere 50 meters of water resistance, and a weight around 125 grams with its bracelet. And this is one of the few cocktail times that come with a bracelet. The case itself is pretty simple, and honestly, with a dial like this, that's all you really need. There are no extra details or chamfered edges or anything like that here just a rather rounded and rather slim profile with these narrow lugs protruding out, which is apparent from not only looking top down, but also from the side. And at this particular angle, you can see that there's a little bit of an edge to that clean polished bezel as it comes out just slightly before tapering back towards the crystal. 
And in particular, I do love how that bezel edge meets the crystal at almost the same angle, which just creates a uniform look and makes the crystal look even taller. Now, fitting for a dress watch, the case here is entirely polished, as well as that bezel. Overall, it looks great, but like most polished surfaces, it does wind up being a fingerprint magnet at times. At the three, we have an oversized crown, which is almost, but not quite, onion-shaped. Visually, it's a bit large in proportion to the case, yet it's easy to get a hold of and easy to use. And believe it or not, it's even signed with the Seiko S. Moving to the rear, we have a nice screwed-in exhibition case back, where you not only have the pertinent information around the crystal, but here you can get a good look at that 4R36 movement. The movement itself looks a little plain here, but Seiko did go the extra mile with a good-looking custom rotor. However, while the rotor looks good in person, I noticed in these macro shots that that center section looks a bit rough, and that's kind of disappointing. But what's not disappointing is the dial itself. I mean, this thing is just breathtaking and flat out gorgeous. There are a number of different colorways in the cocktail time lineup, but the dark blue of the SRPB41 was the one that interested me the most. Now, this is a dial that really loves and just dances to the light. From the dial, the indices, and the hands, they all play with the light in their own way. And as such, it's kind of hard to describe what this thing really looks like. So I think the images here really speak for themselves. Now, I've seen a number of other watches with a similar type dial, but they don't come close to the complexities of colors that you can see here. It's almost like looking into a kaleidoscope. Now, on the edge of the dial, you have these polished applied indices, and I'd say they're shaped like pointed daggers. They stand out beautifully against the backdrop, and I think they do add a nice sense of depth to the watch. They also really work well with the gradient lines on the dial to create a uniform design. Now, just beyond those indices, there's a detailed chapter ring. And the way it's implemented here on the dial, I think you barely notice it unless you're looking for it as most of the time your eyes are going to be staring at the center of the dial. Although even with that, I think some people are going to think this is unnecessary and it's a feature that clutters the dial. But personally, it's an addition I really like. And if you're OCD like me, it not only helps you set the watch, but also read it accurately. And for me, that is something that really helps if you plan on wearing this daily rather than just say on special occasions which I think you could also say about the date at the three. And while I think the date would look better if it was positioned at the six, I think Seiko did a pretty good job here. Now, if you're focusing on that date and just staring right at it, I think it does look a little off and then it interrupts the overall flow of the dial. But once you stop focusing on it and then move the watch to arm's length, I think it blends in more than you might think. The nice polished frame matches that of the indices, and that black date wheel helps the date itself blend into that kaleidoscope of colors. So again, I think some would prefer a non-date, but I think it helps if it's something that you're wearing daily. Now last, but certainly not least, we have a set of Daphne hands, as well as a stick second hand with a counterweight that seems to match the indices. Now, it seems like I'm always complaining about Daphne hands on this channel, but believe it or not, these hands are one of my favorite parts of the cocktail time watch. Normal Daphne hands are completely polished, and they just seem to reflect whatever light is around you. So if you're in a darker room, they don't really reflect anything at all. They just look black, and then have a tendency to get lost in the dial. Something I've complained about time and time again. However, Seiko did something quite ingenious here, and this was actually pointed out to me by a viewer when I was looking at the soulless starlight. Rather than have the hands completely polished, Seiko split them in half, with one half polished and the other brushed. And that allows you to see at least half of those hands regardless of the lighting conditions. It's really a fantastic idea, and I don't know if anyone else is doing it, but if not, they really should, as it gives them an almost two-toned look with an enhanced jagged point. And I think this helps them really stand out clearly against that dial, which gives the cocktail time not only a great looking design, but a really functional one as well. 
It's always easy to make out not only the hands, but the indices as well. You know, it's no wonder that the original became a cult classic, or that Seiko then created an entire line based off that one watch. This design is that good. And I think if you're looking for a dress watch that really stands out in a crowd, this is a perfect choice for that price, as it's simply breathtaking, easy to use, and a pretty unique design. However, there is one other thing to consider with the cocktail time, and I'll talk about that right at the end. Now, as for the movement, well, this one uses your standard Seiko 4R35. This is one I've seen time and time again, and it's basically Seiko's entry-level workhorse movement. You have your standard beat rate, hacking, and hand winding. It's pretty much everything you need at this price. Although it would be nice if Seiko had put an upgraded 6R movement in this, just like those original cocktail times, but Seiko seems to be reserving those for watches at a higher price range these days. So as for the bracelet, well, this is one of the few cocktail times that has one. And overall it is pretty good, but it is lacking in a couple of places. What's good is that the finish and the design of the bracelet match the watch nicely. And it's this two-tone polished brush design. The links are thinner than what you might get with some of Seiko's divers, yet they still have a really good solid feel to it. And the links conformed nicely around my 7-inch wrist and overall was really comfortable to wear throughout the day. The watch is a little larger than, say, your traditional dress watch, but it's easy to use and has a really bold presence. The only real negatives I found with it is that the butterfly clasp is pressed and that the end links are folded. While some other brands would give you more, for better or worse, this is typical with Seiko at this price range. Yet, this is one instance that I don't really mind it as much as I think this watch looks better and is much more suited to be on a leather strap. While the bracelet is nice, it tends to blend in with the case while wearing it, as your eyes are just focused on that dial. Yet once you put the watch on a variety of leather straps, I think the contrasting colors there really help the entire thing pop more. And this is just a great example. I mean, it's hard not to love the look here. Now, normally I like to wrap this whole thing up by talking about value and bringing up some other comparable watches, but I think that's pretty hard to do here. While occasionally imitated, I don't think the cocktail time has ever really been duplicated. So while there are plenty of other dress watches out there, I can't think of anything that really comes close enough to bring up. Although I will say that at this price, Sapphire, maybe a better movement, or maybe even a better bracelet would be nice but this is Seiko we're talking about. And there are a few other things that I might change, as it is a little thicker and a little wider than your traditional dress watch. But as a whole, it's still very manageable, and I think it's relatively average for an automatic watch, and especially so at this price. If you really want to go thinner, you're either going to have to go mechanical, quartz, or spend a bit more money. But whatever faults it may have, a lot of that can be forgiven just by looking at it. It's just strikingly beautiful. And if you're looking for a dress watch that really stands out and really makes a statement, there isn't going to be anything that comes close to this at the same price. So if you are interested in a cocktail time, they are definitely worth taking a look. But the only other thing I'd caution you on, and this is sort of final words of wisdom here, is to take a second and really think if this fits into your style and what you like. And personally, that's something I'm still trying to answer for myself. When I originally started wanting one of these, the only other dress watch I had was a Bambino. And since then, I've gotten a few more, and those are also watches that I love, and maybe a better fit for me style-wise. So while I love looking at the cocktail time and had a great time photographing it, I still have to think if it's a watch that I'd actually wear. And that's something I'd advise you to do as well. But that's my take on Seiko's Blue Cocktail Time. Let me know your thoughts down below. Or if there's another dress watch I should take a look at, let me know that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.